I used to adore Command and Conquer when I was a kid. Commanding a whole army at once, building up a base of high-tech weapons, making rather worrying jokes about invading European countries, sorry about that. Watching FMV sequences which looked magical at the time, backed by a soundtrack which seemed to both sum up the year it was made and yet stand apart from it when viewed in retrospect. Seriously, nobody seems to write a game soundtrack the way Frank Klopaki does. Wrap all this up in a 5 minutes into the future setting which looked contemporary but allowed for sci-fi elements like invisible tanks or a goddamn orbital laser weapon, and you've got a pretty compelling title on your hands. So, been there, done that, bought the unofficial t-shirt, but that was 1995, and it might well have been the best year for the entire series. I reckon that by about 2010, EA had absolutely no idea what to do with Command & Conquer and cared even less. After the widely panned Tiberian Twilight, followed by a browser MMO that I've never played and can't really comment on, fans waited six years for a new release, which was a mobile game I've never played and can't really comment on. There's a cancelled FPS game somewhere around that time too. Point is, compare this to damn near yearly releases since the first one, and maybe you can see where I got this ignorance or apathy picture from. So the fact that EA cared enough to put together a remastered release including both Tiberian Dawn and Red Alert, yeah, that was something of a surprise. Now, there's not a hell of a lot of point in comparing the original release to the remastered in terms of which one should you play. Unless you're looking for a purist experience, the ease of setup plus quality of life improvements in remastered make it the clear winner if you have the money to buy it. Otherwise, you can download the disc images for free and throw them in a DOS box. Those are official, by the way. EA released the disc images as freeware in 2007. I'll still compare the two experiences, if only to catalogue what's changed. But I'm also going to throw OpenRA into the mix, as up until now, this open source release was the easiest way to get a modern feeling CNC fix. Despite what the name would imply, it has Tiberian Dawn, Red Alert, and June 2000 game modes. OpenRA and CNC Remastered both have their own strengths, weaknesses, and straight up differences, so hopefully I'll be able to tell you which one suits you best. And it's worth pointing out that while OpenRA and the aforementioned DOSBox can run on Windows, macOS, and Linux, the remastered edition only runs on Windows, so if that's your criteria, then yeah, may well decide it for you. You could maybe get it to run with Wine or something, but you'll need to research that yourself. Now, before we properly start this, I should point out that I will mostly be focusing on Tiberian Dawn. Pretty sure Red Alert never ran on my 486, so it missed the nostalgia boat for me, which means I'm horribly unfamiliar with it, and thus won't be able to provide a solid comparison. Also, I'll ramble on about technical aspects of the game whenever I feel like it, because apparently I can't help myself. Cool? Cool. So, things get off to a good start with this, a new version of the legendary CNC installer program. Except it's not installing anymore, it's upgrading the game to high definition. I mean, it's doing nothing at all, it's just a video that plays when you first run the game after installation has already happened, but this whole thing is nostalgic and adorable and I love it. They didn't need to include this, the game would have been perfectly releasable without it. But it's a lovely little bonus put in by a developer who I feel understands and appreciates both the game they're remastering and the fanbase they're remastering it for. Which is no surprise really, given that the developer EA hired for the job is none other than Petroglyph Games, a company founded by some programmers from Westwood Studios, the original developers of Command & Conquer, after that company was closed down by EA. Oh, that's awkward. Doesn't look like anyone's holding a grudge, however. Frank Klopaki worked with EA on the Red Alert 3 soundtrack, and of course Joe Cookin played Kane for two EA published CNC games plus one expansion pack. He even recorded a special message to promote the remaster, and he really doesn't age, does he? I mean, maybe the video quality is hiding something, but goddamn! Anyway, my point is that the people working on this remaster clearly cared about what they were doing, and that's wonderful to see. I mean, they released a 17 minute video showing the sheer effort they put into trying to find the original tapes used for the FMV sequences. And with that, we might as well get the issue of the FMV out the way. Long story short, while they did find some behind the scenes green screen footage, they sadly didn't find the original master tapes, and thus had to work with basically the same video files that shipped with the game. The video files that had to be compressed to fit on two CDs and reliably be played back by a 486 processor with a two-speed CD-ROM drive. So not HD quality, to put it mildly. For CNC Remastered, the developers decided to go with a machine learning upscaler algorithm to best fit this footage on our flat screens, and the results are... 
inconsistent. That said, I think this is probably the best we could have hoped for. First, the original video files were in tiny VGA resolution and that had to be increased to anything from 6 to 12 times larger. Big ask at the best of times. Second, whilst we've seen pretty good results from this machine learning technique elsewhere, they're generally working from an MPEG encoded video or something similar. The Command & Conquer videos were encoded with Westwood's proprietary format and machine learning being what it is, I don't think the program quite knew what to do with it. Sometimes it looks fantastic, like this Westwood splash screen from when you start the game. Sometimes it looks like a claymation model covered in lard. And sometimes it looks and sounds about as good as it did on the PlayStation, as if nothing had been done to it at all. General rule is, if people are on screen, it's going to look slightly weird. Unfortunately, that's all the parts they can't really replace without inventing time travel. And good intentions leading to time travel chaos is pretty much the entire starting point of Red Alert, so they probably dropped that plan quite quickly. They did manage to increase the frame rate though, that part worked. Although sometimes only for the backgrounds. Watching two disparate parts of the video moving at different frame rates is just weird as hell, I don't know what happened there. The really strange one for me is some of the briefing sections, where the live action parts look well, as good as this remaster manages, but the pop-up graphics look like someone melted crayons into mud. I'm not an expert on this, but I'm guessing the machine learning algorithm is getting confused between the animated and live action elements. Maybe it would work better if you cut those two elements out, ran the upscaling separately and then merged them back together. Or do what they did with the Nod and GDI logos, which was to draw entirely new art and edit that in there instead. That worked really well. They're not above doing this approach either, because the screens from in between missions are entirely redone. Maybe they ran out of time to fix all the FMVs, maybe the game can get patched later to fix this, I don't know. If they do, however, I'd like an option to display those cutscenes in their original blocky glory, but that's just me. I fully understand why they didn't prioritise that one. While we're on the multimedia side of things, we've got original, remastered and bonus soundtracks available. Original is the same as what you got in 1995, remastered is presumably a less compressed version of the former, and bonus is the same soundtrack as performed by Frank Klopaki's band The Tiberian Sons, which is a neat addition. And if you want to mix and match them, you can make your own playlist in-game. You'll even get an achievement for doing so. Yep, achievements are in this, that's about all I have to say on that subject. Moving on to the most obvious change, at least while you're actually playing, there's new art for units, buildings and terrain because there's not much an upscaler can do with a 9x11 pixel sprite, there's just not enough to work with. So they redrew it at 4K resolution, and it's fine. Nothing is glaringly wrong, the buildings in particular look pretty nice, but there's something about the art style that makes me miss the abstracted realism of the original. It was a look that implied, this is the best we can do at such a low resolution, and your imagination filled in the gaps to create a realistic feel to it all. The new art looks artificial by comparison, and probably on purpose, that's the art style they were going for. I'm not saying that they should have gone the Mortal Kombat route and tried digital sprites, although now I say it out loud, the 90s gamer in me would love to see that, but not a sensible decision, commercially speaking, I get it. None of this complaining actually means anything though. Two minutes into a mission and I didn't even notice it anymore. And if you miss the old battle graphics that much, you just hit spacebar to bring them back. On the Battlefield screen anyway, the UI stays the same either way, but that's just me wanting everything exactly as it was modes for every remaster, but ignore me. Another minute into playing new shiny mode and you'll notice that the unit movement is a whole lot smoother with the new art than with the old. Weirdly, that makes sense to me. It preserves the look of the old game where pixels were being filled in on a grid. Applying that smoothing to the old art would probably make it look like cardboard cutouts being moved around a scrapbook page. There is one limitation this highlights, however, and it's that the animation is limited to the same number of frames as the original. This applies to both units, where certain vehicle turning animations got more frames than the four or so that infantry walk cycles got, and to terrain like this flowing water effect here. I complained about it in the Secret of Monkey Island Special Edition, and I'm gonna complain about it here. It looks janky as hell once you notice it. But what I figured that some, if not most of you, will want to know is how the remaster plays, since that's what you'll spend most of your time doing. The hardest part about playing the original Command & Conquer, aside from how bad I am at the missions where you don't get a base, is that it's missing a lot of modern touches that we probably take for granted when playing modern RTS games. For examples, the original game has no unit queuing, forcing you to build a unit and wait for it to finish before you can even start on another. 
Remastered lets you queue as many as you'd like, either one at a time or in batches of five if you hold the shift key. The original has no building queuing, whereas the remaster does exactly the same thing for some reason. So good luck building up any kind of decent wall without going insane first. OpenRA lets you queue up units and buildings, for the record. The original simply threw new buildings and units into this grid as and when they became available to you, forcing you to scroll through your units and buildings alike to find out what you wanted. The remaster splits them into building, infantry, vehicle and super weapon tabs, the latter being where your airstrike, iron cannon and nuclear weapon will live. Given that an entire tab is a bit much for free items, OpenRA relegates these to floating icons in the top left corner as and when they become available. It's a little more cumbersome, especially when you're used to clicking on a building to access its particular set of buildables, but it's tolerable, and better than what was there before. OpenRA further splits these into buildings, infantry, vehicles, smaller buildings like silos, and so on. There's also assigning collections of units into number groups, which works as well as it used to, with the addition of actually showing you the number of a particular group. So, yay that. As for a case where they stayed true to the original, the pathfinding is still garbage, especially when it comes to multiple harvesters. They get so confused. And there's a few changes which are just bizarre. Like, who came up with the keyboard shortcuts for all these buildables? Because I don't get it. I mean, I get that you'll run out of function keys to use the shortcuts eventually, but look at this. How do these letters match up to these buildings? How? And then there's the only omission I could find in the remaster. The option to replay the pre-mission FMVs isn't available from the in-game pause menu. You either have to quit or restart the current mission to see it again. You can still get the text that summarises your objectives in-game, that's good, but nothing the original didn't do. Put very simply, the remaster provides a less cumbersome way to play the game. You can do everything you did before, but in quicker and easier ways, with the option to return to the dark times if you so wish, right down to turning individual options on or off. The remaster still gets trumped by OpenRA in that regard, which, among other things, lets you queue up waypoints for your units to follow. The one I really miss is setting rally points for any building that produces units. Normally they'll just pile out into the closest available space and you either need to move them manually each time or actually pay attention to how close together your buildings are. And since the remaster sticks to making you place buildings right next to each other, that's easier said than done. On the other hand, the OpenRA experience isn't faithful. It's very specifically a reimagining of the CNC experience. That means monkeying around with the unit stats, the rate at which new buildings and units get unlocked, and a bunch of other changes that can take some getting used to if you're used to the original. This isn't the purest experience either. Despite letting you play the story missions and even letting you watch the FMVs if you give it the right CDs, it's designed to be a quick and easy way to get your CNC fix. Which it does do, but if you're looking for the same experience you got in 1995, this ain't it. If we step out of the missions themselves for a second, we can see a few great additions I haven't mentioned yet. If you start a new game, you'll pick a side and you'll play through the missions as normal. The game saves that progress and lets you select any mission you've done already to play again including the missions you didn't pick on a particular playthrough. That's great, now I don't have to remember to save at the end of every mission to access all the missions, it's all right there. And I mean all. The remastered collection has almost every official mission created for these games, including expansion packs, console only missions, and uh, a little something for fans of dinosaurs and or giant ants, if you figure out how to unlock it. Or get frustrated and look it up, because that's what I did. There's also achievements associated with completing these missions, with quick to read progress icons, so those of us with completionist tendencies might want to set some time aside before jumping in. Furthermore, it finally answers an age-old question for me. Does it actually matter which one of these arrows I click when they both point to the same region? Turns out yes, these are different missions. The new UI makes this much clearer, along with animating twice as fast as the original. That helps speed things along a little. And one final thing which I haven't seen any other version of the game do. Subtitles for the FMVs. Something I think should be standard for modern games is since it helps people who are hard of hearing, deaf, or don't speak the language being spoken in the video. Well done there. Of course, any complaints I have could be rendered entirely moot by the fact the remaster has mod support, complete with Steam integration and an in-game mod browser. Which is only half useful, since you need to restart the game to change which mods are activated, but slightly more convenient than the alternative. And there's a fair few mods up there already. 
New maps, rebalancing, Japanese speech, renaming units back to their previous branded names, letting you place buildings one grid space apart from one another, all sorts. There's even one to make what everyone thought was the UFO terrain tile back into an actual UFO. Turns out that was actually a helicopter chassis. Yeah, I'm disappointed too. I don't know how easy the mods are to make, but I do know that there's a map editor that's shipped with the game. So that's taken care of for you. There's a lot of potential here, I think, but it's all contingent on somebody actually making the mod. There's no guarantee there. And there's already multiple mods to fix the awful pathfinding, which is pretty telling. Fair play to including the original gameplay, but the option to improve it is nice. I feel like there's a hierarchy to remasters. Bare minimum is to make the game run on a modern operating system with some kind of graphical and or gameplay overhaul. If they check that box, then it's on to critiquing these overhauls and how they hurt or hindered the game. After that, it's a matter of judging the optional extras the remaster offers. And for £18, I feel like this offers a lot. I keep having to remind myself that EA is involved with this because their money-grabbing reputation doesn't match up with this package. Even weirder than that, they released the source code for this remaster. If you want to make a change to this game, and you happen to be a C++ programmer with some time on their hands, you can do so for free. I mean, is this the first EA game to have its source code released? Nope, wait, there's a whole page dedicated to this, never mind. Except all the links are just for EA WebKit, so that's the only part that's open source? Or they're just releasing their modifications for existing open source projects? I have no idea. Anyway, hopefully that's enough information to point you towards CNC Remastered or OpenRA, but I'll attempt a summary of sorts. If you're looking for a free, cross-platform experience that's at least halfway toward the CNC you remember with a bunch of tweaks, OpenRA will do you well. Bear in mind that there's a bit of setup if you want to play the campaign missions as opposed to just quick skirmish matches, download the CNC Gold Discs images, mount the images so they're readable as a drive, and point OpenRA in their direction, done. On the other hand, if you don't mind paying a fair price, you can have all the hard work done for you, with some shiny bonus features to boot. As much as I want to say I'm just glad the games are getting some attention, we've seen that result in some lazy remasters. It's the kind of thing you can barely even describe as a good start. CNC Remastered is not lazy. There's a lot of love put into this. If I need a quick RTS fix, this is what I'm going to boot up from now on. Hey, me again. Thanks for watching to the end. This is just your regular reminder. If you liked or disliked the videos, there's buttons for that. If you want to see more of these videos as they come out, there's the subscribe button for that. Or if you particularly like what I'm doing and can afford it, I do have a Patreon you can pledge to on a monthly basis. And certain tiers will get access to videos two days earlier than the rest of the world. Anyway, enough banter. Thanks again. See you soon.